Souls are just me, trust me Something in the bed just above me Something like a dream state You call it a clean break Do you feel the vibes, baby? Do you feel the vibes? Exponite, you're now rocking with your boy KOR X Kalel, the last son of Planet Xbox, and you're listening to Super Pod Shots. Yeah, man, I know I missed this weekend. I apologize. Uh, I was trying to get one out, but hey, football, man. What, <laughs> what can I say? It was a football weekend, man. I had to watch my Jets play. We like on the verge of making the playoffs, so I was really into football this weekend. But anyway, so I got a lot of great content today, man. You listen. Microsoft just dropped the the trademark for a new game called Fractured. And everybody's losing their mind. Oh my God, what is Fracture? What could this game be? I mean, don't we all do this? <laughs> Every time we see a new trademark for some game that's exclusive to a platform, whether it's PlayStation, Xbox, or Nintendo, you're trying to figure out what type of game is it. When you look at it, people think Fragment. They think, oh, maybe it's like Quantum Break DLC. But I, I don't think people would trademark quantum break dlc you just trademark quantum break and all that entails so you know what i decided to do was i said you know what there's a lot of people talking about a lot of nonsense that doesn't make sense you got guys out there talking about oh no this could be alan wait because there was news about alan wait too that i'll get to next and um they're like oh it could be alan wait alan wait fragments because he's losing his mind and all this stuff like that and you have people talking about oh no you know it could be a new triple triple a ip or then people are like, hey, don't get your hopes up. It could be a small game. You don't want to just, you know, hype everything up. So being the man that I am, I went ahead and start looking around and came across this image during the HoloLens demo back in the day. And I just remember seeing this image during the demo where this woman was walking around and she has all of these blocks up. Obviously, you know, you got the holograms in front of you. You can press one of the holograms and boom, it opens up on the screen. But in those boxes, they put an Easter egg and it was actually the game fractured. When you see the game, the, the, the way the image is set up, you see the word fractured, but the rest of the word is kind of faded out. And then you have all these little broken up polygons and these little broken up, like, you know, weird triangles and things like that in the background, kind of like shattered glass, like shattering glass. So my initial thing was like, hey, maybe it is quantum break stuff. So I posted this on Twitter and obviously it got it made its rounds. And once it got to someone who knew or remembered this, they came and this person named is Shoop. Um, and he put out a link and said, hey, I did an investigation on this a long time ago during the HoloLens reveal. And he has a HoloLens subreddit. So as I go look at his link and I go look at the game, my man has found out what this game could possibly be. Now, what we understand is that the game is actually made by a student or it was made by a student. It was a student project. And now it seems that Microsoft might have taken a liking to this particular game and now it can actually be a game for HoloLens. Not so much that it can't be one for Xbox One because it absolutely can, but the way the game looks, at least from what the students show, the initial concept could really be something that would work great for HoloLens. So what the kid shows us is that in this game, you're in a, a first person mode. There's no guns. As you're walking around this building, you come across a lab with people in lab coats. He jumps down and he starts to engage them. And when he engages them, he has some type of psychic ability in his hand. And when he projects his hand forward, the energy comes out and breaks the people up into fragments. And they fall over the floor. So that he's running around and he's killing all these people. Now what's really cool is there's a guy in front of him about to shoot him. He teleports behind him into a vent. So it seems like what the character is doing, he's running around the map. You can leave these little energy doors, I guess you can say, and use those doors to teleport from one location to another, all while also projecting this energy as a offensive weapon. Obviously, it goes no further than that. It's a student project. Graphically, it really wasn't anything special. Again, it was a student project. But the concept 
is there. And I think about what you can do with HoloLens with this game. So imagine being the person in your arms in front of you and having these characters projected throughout the room. And now as you're moving throughout the room, you can actually use your hands to project energy, almost like you're using the force. You know what I'm saying? And people are just shattering all around you. You have the backing of Microsoft. You have the the money to build this game and some of the best studios in the world now to help this kid's concept. That's really interesting. And obviously this game is not something that's going to come out next year. Maybe 2017, maybe holiday 2017 or whenever HoloLens comes out. Who knows? What I do know is that Microsoft is making a hell of an effort to get new IPs into their portfolio. They've done a great job so far. And I keep saying this. People always say Microsoft doesn't have enough diversity. And I say, what are you playing on? Because you're not playing the same Xbox One that I'm playing on. If you don't like something, you don't like it. And it's one thing to say, you know what? I'm not feeling that game. They need to get something that I want to play. It's another thing to sit up there and not recognize the diversity that Microsoft has put out on the platform. IP wise and new wise, you have Sea of Thieves, Recore, you have um, Scalebound, Quantum Break, Orient of Blind Forest. They are really working digitally. And then you turn around and they just put this trademark out for Fragment. That's another new IP. Now, again, that could also work on Xbox One because in the game, you see the guy's arms. So you could always run around. It reminded me of, um, oh, what was the name of that game on the Xbox? Oh, I can't remember. There was a game on Xbox where the guy had power in his fist and he would like punch people and do damage to them. It was crazy. I can't remember the game. I'm sure somebody knows what I'm talking about um, back in the day. A lot of games I used to play. I just, just too many, too many games actually. But the reality of it is, is that this could work in that space as well. And it's something different. It's not so much there's any guns in the game. He's not using a weapon. He's using his psychic ability. It could be a first person RPG. They could just switch it up completely and make it into a third person game. But the concept is there of having these abilities and trying to escape a lab. I think it's a really cool concept. Um, and if that is the actual game, because like I said, when he killed the person on screen, they broke up exactly how it looks on the little fragment image for HoloLens. Like when you see the background, you look at the people and they break up just like it into like these little glass fragments, polygon type, you know, things. So it, it, it just seems like those two things fall in place and it makes sense that that's the game. Um, and I'm pretty sure they may show something at this year's E3 about it for 2017. Or if not at E3, maybe they may show something at GDC because that's where they'll talk about, you know, Windows 10. They'll talk about DX12. They'll talk about HoloLens. They'll show some more stuff off. This could be the first breakout game for HoloLens and it could just be another new IP for the Xbox One. So Microsoft is doing their damn thing, man, for sure. Remedy came out today with a new trailer. And um, it's not really so much a trailer, more than it is just Sam Lake trying to give us a little teaser about something that he's recording that's going to be in Quantum Break. But <laughs> what happens is during the course of the game, you realize that this is a teaser for Alan Wake. And I don't want to sit up there and say Alan Wake confirmed, but yeah, Alan Wake 2 confirmed, bro. Seriously, you don't go out of your way to make a scene for Quantum Break with you, Sam Lake, the developer, starring in the game, in the like the actual, you know, real life episode part, <laughs> and you give off a crazy Easter egg like that. And it's and I heard this before that he said that it was a strong possibility that, you know, Jack Joyce and Alan Wake actually lived in the same universe. There could be some hell of a way that they can get that to work, you know, with time and the books coming to life and all these things like that. Who knows how they'll make that work? But clearly they have figured out some way to get it to work. And it seems really cool. Check it out.
I'm Sam Lake from Remedy. What are we doing here? We are shooting a live action Easter egg for Quantum Break. I'm playing FBI special agent Alex Casey. And with my partner, we are looking for a missing writer. Sound familiar? Anyway, wanted to take a moment to wish you all happy holidays. Happy holidays. And great new year. You know, it's been a tough year. A lot of hard work finishing off Quantum Break. Now we are almost there. Just putting in these nice to have finishing touches like this piece that you'll find in Quantum Break. Wanted to wish you happy holidays and say a big thank you for your continued support. Remember, better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you. To reach the surface, you must first dive deeper. So, I mean, look, man, at the end of the thing, you look at the guy, he's got the beard going, things are flowing. It, it, it just looks like there's a possibility to, that we could get Alan Wake to maybe a teaser at this year's E3 because Quantum Break drops early this year. So with Quantum Break out of the way, what's the next project? Alan Wake 2, bro. It's not like they're working on Max Payne. That's at Rockstar. So Alan Wake 2 is next. I'm calling it right now. Alan Wake 2 confirmed coming out on Xbox One probably in 2018 because <laughs> that is not coming out in 2017 for sure. 2018 will probably come out and that's a great cycle for them because at the same time, they'll probably be working on the next Quantum Break because like I said before, Quantum Break is a trilogy um, or saga or whatever it is that they have set up, but it's supposed to be more than one game and that's, that's cool, man. A lot of people look forward to Alan Wake. I said this before, Microsoft is going to figure out some type of way to release that game, Alan Wake, with either Quantum Break or with the other Alan Wake. And I don't think they're going to wait that long. I don't think it's going to take us that long to get the Alan Wake backwards compatible game. We'll probably get it with Quantum Break and then they'll drop all the hype for it. Oh, Alan Wake 2 is coming out 20, you know, 18, you know, first quarter 2018, something like that. Uh, whatever. So, I mean, that's that's a real cool thing if they do that, if we get a chance to see that next year along with Fragment. That'd be two games people were not expecting to see at next year's E3, and that just continues to bolster Microsoft's library. And they they are really doing their damnedest to get the ship right. They are really building a great portfolio. And I'm telling you, man, people sleeping. They, they woke up a sleeping giant right now, man. I mean, they may not be selling like as great as PlayStation 4, but man, to deny them with the games they have, and the high quality they have, and all the grades that they've gotten, man, like, they barely have any bad titles, you know, so they, they're doing a great job, um, as far as everything else is concerned, I want to just talk about my most anticipated games for the year of 2016, um, both in AAA and in Indie, all right, guys, so here are my most anticipated games for 2015. Now, this was a very difficult thing for myself. I mean, it really, really, really was difficult. I, I went through a lot of different games, looked at a lot of games that I'm interested in picking up that really has my attention, um, and, and not just exclusives, not just exclusives, because, because you know, it, I'm, I'm on the fence about picking up an NX or PlayStation 4. This is This is where I'm sitting at right now. And I don't want to make a move on a PS4 until I see what the actual NX looks like and what it could do. Because depending on what they offer with that platform, how much it will be and when it releases will determine a lot. Um, though there are a lot of games on PS4 that I'm interested in picking up, it really depends on what NX has to show. Because the Nintendo platform has always been a platform that I've enjoyed playing um, with the family, with my wife. Like I said, I have a three-year-old now, um, so he's getting older. It, there's just a lot of factors in me picking that up that platform over a PS4, which would still just be for me like the Xbox One. So this is my list. 
of games that I'm, I'm really interested in. And I'm going to tell you why as well. So first, let's start with the indie games. Before we get to the big dogs, let's start with the indie games. And if you like my list, let me know in the comment section. Obviously, if you have your own list, go ahead, leave it in the comment section. Let me check them out. I'll talk about them. And, uh, you know, we can always come up with some great ideas of other games and things that I might have missed or things that you're interested in that I had no idea about. So let me know. But here we go. My top five most anticipated indies. Number five, Rhyme for a PlayStation 4. That game looks so Ico-ish. It immediately grabbed my attention the first time I saw it at E3. You know, it was one of the things that I liked about that show. Um, obviously, you had a nostalgia factor of Final Fantasy. You had a nostalgia factor of Shinmu. But out of all the games there, there was something about Ron that was very, very unique. It's, it's one of those type of things that when you look at the other platforms, every platform has something unique about them. But when you look at that game, it just felt PlayStation. It felt PS2. You know what I'm saying? Like it gave me that nostalgic feeling when I saw it and I, it immediately grabbed my attention. So Rhyme is my number five most anticipated indie game that I have to play in 2016. Number four, Below. At E3, I got a chance to play Below and this game is keep, it keeps getting pushed back. It keeps getting pushed back. And I told you guys, I said, I spoke to him at E3 and the thing he said to me was it might come out at the end of 2015. He doesn't know. And I said, yeah, 2016, I got you. Because when you don't have a set date or even a set month, that game's not coming out. It's not ready. So I played the game at E3 and it was really dope. What was really cool about the game was that as you go through the course of the game, you go into a dungeon, you have these enemies that attack you. If you get slashed or cut, you actually continue to bleed. You have to bandage yourself and then you have to eat to heal. That's a really dope concept. But if you die, your character is gone forever. Whatever you did with that character, whatever you built his stats up to or whatever is gone. What happens then is you get a new character. When you go back into the dungeon, the entire dungeon changes. It completely resets itself. There's a, it's a dynamic dungeon creator in there. So you never, when you go back in, it's never the same way. You can't, if you went left when you came in, you can't go left again. You either have to go straight or right or down. Um, but if you do come across your body, all the items that you had with you, you can actually get those back, but you have to find your body first. So you really have to explore every nook and cranny in the game uh, before you can continue forward. And to me, that concept is dope. That is hours and hours of dungeon crawling. Very, very interesting, like a Zelda type ish type game with, you know, the things that you have to do and the items and weapons and, you know, um, I guess you could say accessories that you have to get to help you traverse the game. It looks really dope and it's definitely on my list if they ever drop it. And hopefully 2016 is that time. Number three, Cuphead. Cuphead just looks so amazing for a video game. It's just something that when you look at it at first, you're like, wow, who's watching this old ass cartoon? But then when you start to play it, it is really, really difficult it is not an easy game at all i played the game at e3 as well and i died a lot there's a lot of dodging there's a lot of objects on screen it almost feels like one of those japanese space shooters that you get those little 2ds you know top top down shooters like you know raiden or r type or something like well not r type r type aside but like a raiden game or one of those old school games like uh ikigori ikigori if I can remember the name right, on a 360 where you're like top down and you get all these bullets come at you. It's not like that. It just feels like it because you have so many projectiles coming at you at one time from all over the place. And of course, there's patterns in the game without question. But then at the same time, you have to be able to, you know, dodge it. Your timing has to be right. You really can't jump that that high, you know, and it's cool because both characters are different between Cuphead and Mugface. So Really, really cool concept, man. Looking forward to the game. Couch co-op is huge for a title like that. Co-op in general is huge for a title like that. And that's going to be a very, very fun game. And it's going to rub a lot of people the right way. Pause. Because, <laughs> because the game just looks really good and can appeal to a lot of people. Number two, Ashen. 
Ashen is this dope looking RPG game that is set in a world we don't know anything about. Um, I had the, the, the devs of Ashen on the show and I spoke at length about this game. If you have not seen this game or have not heard of this game, go on down to our um, playlist section, look up games on the red carpet and check out our interview with Ashen. This game is dope. First of all, the characters have no faces. We don't know why the characters don't have any faces, so that's a mystery. You can run across other people in the game while you're playing the game. And it's not like it's like, I guess you could say, it's, it's not like it's open world MMO-ish, but you might be in the same area and run across somebody else. And you guys can actually communicate and try to team up and stay with each other. As you go through the course of the game, you go into these towns, you can actually build these towns up to bring in more people into the town. Once they're in the town, if they have a certain skill set, they might be able to give you things or create things for you that will help you on your journey. This is like, this is an epic indie game. Like I've never thought there would be an indie game like this in this way. And that's not to say that indie games can't be big. Obviously, you look at a game like Hellblade, which is made by an independent developer. So are the CD Projekt Red guys. They're an independent developer. But you look at this game and it's, it has some Dark Souls to it a little bit, where it's like, you know, you go in and you die, you die, you die a lot. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you want to try to have a companion. There's a co-op aspect to it, being able to run into different people. Being able to build your own village and have these people, like, what if you got an amazing blacksmith and they stay at your village and they can create weapons for you? This game is really interesting. There's not a lot known on it. He spoke at length and he said some really great things about the game, but there's a lot of things he doesn't want to give up because that's the whole point of the game. We don't know why their faces are covered. We don't know why there's so many clouds in the sky and it's so dreary. There's ash everywhere. Ash is covering the entire sky. There has to be a reason behind it. I can't wait to find out. That is one of my most anticipated. And my number one most anticipated indie game for 2016, Hyperlight Drifter. This game, the music alone has me. It is Soul Tron jazz esque. It's just, it captures me when I hear it. Any type of preview, any type of video I watch, when they play that theme, I am hooked. I am in it. 16-bit reminds me of when I was a kid, my Super NES days. You know, the, the guy has speed. He's jumping. He's thrusting all over the, the, the map. Pause. Then you have, you know, you have laser gun play. You got sword play. You get all types of items. And the story sounds real interesting. You're a disease. You know, there's not a lot of people left in the world. You're trying to find a cure for the disease. You have to go through these dungeons and on this adventure to try to find a cure if you're lucky to even find one. I mean, this game looks really cool. You can get a max. <laughs> you have a thousand enemies coming at you. It seems like you have all types of powers. And, a, and this is another RPG like Ashen. So I'm really excited for this game. That is my number one most anticipated game. And I also spoke with those guys at Heart Machine. If you want to hear more about it, go check it out in our playlist over on, on the red carpet. That's where we talk to our indie developers as well as AAA devs. So that's my most anticipated for indie games. Now, time to get to the big dogs. Some of these games you might not agree with. We all have different tastes. But these games are my most anticipated games for 2016 and i think each one of them is going to be a triple a hit number five gears of war four i know what you're saying to yourself you're like oh gears of war four you know it's another gears of war at the same time it's new you haven't you know they didn't introduce marcus they didn't introduce um you know any of the original characters they started out with two new characters and when i was at e3 i got a chance to chat with rod ferguson who is the the you know i guess you could say he is the head of the coalition now what used to be black touch studios and he didn't really want to touch too much on the game because he was working on gears of war ultimate edition he wanted to get that out before he even 
thought of even speaking about Gears of War 4, and I'm pretty sure they just they still don't want to talk about it. The game is being developed, it's not coming out to next holiday. That's just something they wanna they don't want to touch right now. However, when I spoke to him, I gave my opinion about some of the things that I thought about the game. And what was interesting and and it, and something that people didn't like about the game, besides not having the main characters, was that they introduced a monster into the game. They didn't introduce the locust. And I said to him, I wonder, because it's it's not weird to think this, I wonder that in the defeat of the Locust in the last Gears of War game, all of the creatures that they originally had are now normal, or there are normal ones of that species. That creature could just be a normal monster. When you look at all of the, the creatures that the Locust use in Gears of War, they're all twisted and, you know, tormented and bent backwards and his skin is ripped open and then turn into vehicles and bombs and weapons like it's insane what they do to these creatures you know <laughs> like it really is like no creature is born a blimp like they had a there was a monster blimp in gears of war 3 you know you look at the little critters that come on you that you kick these things are not born that way they have to be made and i wonder if that was just a regular monster because it's just not that many locusts left you know, I don't know. We we don't know. But that's something that captured my eye that that just proved that there's going to be a difference between this game and the regular Gears of War. Could there be a new enemy? Could there be a new threat? Yes, the locusts do, do exist, but are they not that big of a threat compared to whatever they were fighting now, whatever's hunting them? I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm intrigued graphically it looked amazing and it can only look better like if they were running that on an xbox one at the time it's going to look a hundred times better by the time we get it dx12 you know the game's going to be dx12 it's on unreal 4 man by the time that thing come out next holiday season is going to be one of the best looking games out in 2016 moving on my number four most anticipated game horizon zero dawn I mean, there's not really much left to say. It really isn't. I mean, I spoke about this game at length. I'm not a PlayStation fanboy anymore. <laughs> I used to be on PS2. But the game really intrigued me. Now, my question is, can Guerrilla Games deliver? I'm not a fan of Killzone. I, I played it. I just didn't like it. I, I, it and it looked great. Graphically, it was great. The physics, when you shoot somebody, the way they body turn was cool. I just wasn't feeling the story. I wasn't feeling the gameplay. Just something about the game that just throws me completely off. I'm just not a fan of it. However, Horizon Zero Dawn looks completely different, completely interesting. The fact that you have robotic dinosaurs and you get a chance to play with a bow and arrow, which is like one of my favorite weapons. First of all, if anybody knows me as an RPG guy, I love swords and I love bow and arrows. That is like the illest weapons to me when it comes to like playing characters. If I can be a stealth character or I can be like a warrior or an archer, those are the three classes that I would pick. Stealth first, warrior second, archer third. But if I can be a stealth archer with a sword, oh my God, forget it. I'm like bananas in on, um, Elder Scrolls Online. I'm so glad they give you the ability to, to be that way, you know? So we'll see what happens with that game. I think the game will turn out well. Um, I think Guerrilla Games is, is Guerrilla Games reminds me of Lionhead. They're like the studio that has the potential to make a great, amazing game. But the games they come out with are hit or miss. They can be good, but not great. Some people will like them. Some people will be like, eh, it's okay. They could do better. I think that's how I feel about them. I'm hoping that Horizon, um, really really gets them to where people can really recognize them as an elite studio my number three most anticipated game mass effect andromeda listen mass effect andromeda first of all mass effect period is an amazing game it was my favorite game last year or close to being one of my favorite games of last year definitely in my top three the series alone you know i love bioware I love Kotar. I'm an advocate for Nice of the Old Republic on Xbox One. I don't know how many times I tweeted Phil Spencer about that in Shenmue 3. 
But Mass Effect really took it to a whole nother level. You know, playing the first game, that first experience, being on the Citadel, the music, the interactivity, the graphics <laughs> were stunning and amazing. The ship, the lights, when you travel, the dialogue, the voice acting, everything about that game was damn near perfect until they got to the end. The ending is the only thing that I can really say that was like, what the hell? I went through all of this for that? Are you kidding me? Mass Effect 2, by far, my favorite Mass Effect. You know, like I actually saved my entire crew. A lot of people don't realize that before your crew gets kidnapped. If you haven't played Mass Effect, I'm going to give you a hint right now. Before your crew gets kidnapped, make sure you do every single mission. If you do every single mission before your crew gets kidnapped, when they get kidnapped, you need to immediately go to the final boss. You need to go to the final area and fight the final boss because in that sequence if you get there in time and you don't wait you can actually save the majority of your crew and that's what happened and i was able to do that the game was really dope man the consequences and actions of the things that you say and the people you save and how that reflects in the next game which is amazing love the game big big fan of the game can't wait for it my number two most anticipated game quantum break without question in my mind and in my opinion the best looking game on any console hands down uncharted 4 looks absolutely stunning it is probably on par or in the same class but this quantum break the particle effects in this game looks amazing man i'm talking about just mind-blowing in my opinion some people might not see it but when you look at those gifts you know you look at those things and you see the people being blown up and you see the smoke coming off of them or you see the shadow effects or the lighting effects or the way he moves when he pops out his machine gun or how he moves when he's running full speed and he jumps in the air man the camera angles what crazy the game is bananas bro come on man Come on, bro. Don't 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 do it to yourself. This game's gonna be crazy. It's made by Remedy. You already know it's gonna have an amazing story. I just think the game is just gonna be great. It's gonna be a great game. I'm looking forward to it. It's my number two most anticipated game, and I am super hyped for it. And my number one most anticipated game of 2016, Scalebound. This game is a game that I've been wanting on the Xbox One for the longest time. I, you know, I even nauseate myself sometimes just talking about RPGs and JRPGs and things like that. This is a mix of, you know, Japanese and Western cultures. Being able to play Scalebound, an action RPG game. I want, I don't want to say JRPG because it's not really a turn-based type title, but you know, having an action RPG developed by Platinum. Didn't have turned around and say, hey, guess what, guys? If you want to play with three of your friends with three of their dragons, you can do that. That is insane, son. That is absolutely bananas. That's bananas. You can go through the whole game and just be playing the game a single player with no problem. Or you can just have a beast character and then just turn around and have your friend come in who has the opposite. He has a beast dragon. And then you guys can rotate and strategize how you want to fight enemies. He can be a projectile guy. You could be a person that is, you know, in the battle attacking. Your dragon can be projectile while his dragon can be in the in the battle, you know, close range melee combat. It's really dope, man. It's really cool. Then you got different uh, abilities that the dragon can have. Poison, ice, fire. You know, it's, it's really sick, man. The game looks really good graphically. It looks great graphically. I mean, when you look at the dragon, it looks like how it looked when they first showed, like, the preview of the game. It really looks close to that. Like, it really does. And the game is just, I'm hyped. I'm super hyped. Obviously, I'm hoping that they fix whatever they need to fix with the game by that time. If they go ahead and, you know, port it over to DX12, that would be great. I don't know. I would hate for a game to come out in 2016 and not be ported over to DX12. There's still games that's going to be dropped early. That's DX11. Um, but it would be great if it was DX12. 
because I think the, the added ability of whatever the X12 will do for the Xbox One will help the game. And I, I really hope that that's what it is. So those are my top fives for both indie and both uh, AAA titles for next year. Now, obviously, there's some games I left out. And you're asking, how could you leave these games out? Well, here are my honorable mentions. My honorable mention is ReCore. ReCore, obviously, is a game I'm looking forward to. I just spoke about it earlier. The problem with ReCore is I haven't seen ReCore. I don't even know what ReCore looks like. I, I haven't seen any gameplay on record all we seen was a cgi trailer in silence for the entire year we know some things about dynamic sandstorms and dynamic changing of the environment you have the whole metrovania thing going on um they've taken cues from zelda so there are some really great great things happening in the game but we just don't know what it looked like and i can't be anticipated for something that i don't know if i'm going to really be into it just based on someone's word i need to see the game so that is an honorable mention. Uncharted 4. Uncharted 4 is in my honorable mentions um, and, and not a, a, a most anticipated because I, I look at Uncharted like I look at Halo 5. It's Uncharted. Just like Halo is Halo. I'm going to get it regardless, but I'm not anticipating anything. <laughs> like, that's really it. I'm looking at games that really have me hype. Uncharted doesn't have me hype. It's a great game. It looks good. It's a great series. It's something I'll pick up without question, but I, I'm not... I'm not, and it's not my most anticipated. Um, sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is definitely one of my most anticipated. Um, we had a little thing up on um, TICGN.com where we talked about Sea of Thieves and how uh, the possibilities of Sea of Thieves are big. You know, you can create your own pirate ship. Uh, well, we don't know that for, for fact, but when I brought it up, they didn't deny it. <laughs> I can say that much. They didn't deny it. So, you know, the, the possibilities of building your own pirate ship, you know, everybody having jobs on a particular deck. Maybe somebody's a captain. Maybe somebody works for sales. Maybe, maybe somebody's a lookout. That is pretty dope. Having an entire crew being on the high seas. You're dealing with magic. You're dealing with um, treasures probably sunk in the ocean. You can push somebody off the plank and kill them if you want to. Um, a a Raiding other ships, beating the enemy, live characters on screen, by the way, and and just taking on the ships. Man, I, I think about One Piece <laughs> all the time. I'm like, man, it'd be so dope if I can build the Straw Hat crew. You, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, definitely see if these is up in there, man. I, I got to see more in it. Um, big rare fan, so I know those guys are gonna they're gonna do well, and they got some of the original people working for the old school rare still there working on it, like the maze guys. So I'm really really hyped for that game. Um, honorable mention: Kingdom Hearts three, bro. Come on, son. Kingdom Hearts three. I gotta beat it. I gotta finish this this saga. Something. I, I've been waiting for this game forever. I'm really glad that it went multi plat. Um, able to play it on my Xbox One, so people be like, "Ah, eh, I'm gonna play it on PlayStation because that's where it started." Yeah, okay, Just do your thing, bro. I'm gonna play it on Xbox because it's coming to Xbox. I really don't care about the whole thing about I'm gonna play it where it started. Do your thing. I'm gonna play it on like um the Xbox when it drops. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see um this whole climactic ending if there is one. Of they'll just continue to drag it out like they've been doing. So I am definitely hyped for it. Uh, especially cause, considering I didn't play any of the like smaller handheld titles and things like that. I'm, I'm hoping that they flesh the middle of that story out. Um, and I'm kind of disappointed that they're not bringing like, you know, those games that they're putting up on the PlayStation to the Xbox as well. You know, it's not like we didn't play those games on PS2 back in the day. I just don't understand why they wouldn't bring those games over to the Xbox, there's, there's fans who played those games on Xbox as well. So, I, I, I mean, whatever. What can I say? Finally, uh, Crackdown, man. Crackdown is definitely, I'm anticipating Crackdown just for cloud in general. To see how it works, to see how it functions, see how good it works online. Just to see this full destructibility and how it changes the game when you're playing. Um, obviously, Crackdown is a cool game. Crackdown 1 was definitely more fun than Crackdown 2. I hope they do a better job. Um, and, and, and I'm, I'm really hoping that it lives up to what Microsoft's been talking about for all these years. You know, this cloud compute thing is a serious, serious situation for Microsoft. You know, Sony is trying to innovate with VR. 
They got some really cool features, but Microsoft is really trying to change the game with this cloud compute. I'm not saying that other developers haven't used it like PC, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just saying that Microsoft is doing it in a console space. They have the servers. And if they're able to pull this off, there's a possibility you may start seeing more games do this. There may be more games that use this stuff in the future. And that would be really cool. And that would be a detriment to Microsoft being one of the pioneers of cloud compute and gaming, especially on consoles. So it's really important that this thing works out. If not, it may be looked at as another joke like Connect, And that is something that they don't want. They just can't afford to have this game be a failure. So however long they need to work on this game and make it happen, that is something that they need to do. They cannot rush this game out whatsoever. And I'm kind of glad that we are getting the multiplayer first in the summer of 2016 to get a chance to get our hands on it and play it to see how it is in a while and then get the first, you know, the full retail game later on. I don't know whether it's in a year or 2017 or whatever, but hopefully the game works. We get the single player and we have a full fleshed out game with an amazing online with cloud compute. So those are my honorable mentions. Um... There's a, I, there's a ton of other games I could talk about. For the sake of the show, I'm going to keep it at that. You know, uh, I will try to get in one more show. I'm working out something right now. A lot of fans have been asking me about. I'm in talks with someone right now. We'll see what happens in the next couple of days. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm waiting for emails. But if it does happen, if it does happen, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm just going to drop it. I'm going to pull a Beyonce pause and I'm just going to drop it out of nowhere. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Like, boom, there it is. So, hey, man, I'm your boy, man. K-O-R-S Kalel, the host of Tech Podcast and Creator. Um, shout out to my team, man. They they have done a wonderful job throughout the year, um, both on Twitch, both at TICGN. Dot com all the people that helped get that thing off the ground has really got it rocking and rolling we really appreciate it and obviously my podcast team everybody from the beginning of the year to now i really appreciate everyone and i appreciate all my listeners out there and all your feedback is super super important i'm getting pressured people want me to go multi man people want me to go multi <laughs> they really do they're like bro you should go multi because I could really, you know, they want me to like be this mainstream type thing. And I, and I, people don't understand it's not that easy. Number one. Number two, I feel like the space that I am in, the space that I in, I'm in right now is where I need to be. That's how I feel. I feel like I need to be here, you know, in this space for Xbox, for Microsoft. And stuff like that and i appreciate all the fans that listen and give us love and things like that so like i said i don't have a problem talking about other platforms it would be no different anyway why not talk about playstation and nintendo my focus is on xbox and what is doing great about it but it doesn't mean i can't talk about those other platforms so does that not make me a multi-platform guy i just like xbox a little bit more <laughs> that's really it so hey man appreciate everybody supporting the podcast man whether you're xbox playstation pc on Windows. I am looking for PC writers though. On TICGN.com, we are really trying to expand that into the PC space. Thinking about Steam, Steam games, uh, PC games in general. We got Windows 10 games coming out soon. So we're going to be expanding TICGN and the whole Xbox and entertainment thing into the PC Windows space. So if you're interested in joining the site, if you're a PC gamer, you're a hardcore PC gamer, you know a lot about PC games. And you know a lot about rigs and cards and things like that. Hit me up on Twitter, bro. Or hit me up at TICGN um, on TICGN, TICGN.com. Um, you can e- email me at admin at TICGN.com if you're interested. Admin at TICGN.com. Really appreciate all the support. Love you guys so much. I'm off this planet. Peace.